Good morning, Grace Church. We are so pleased to be able to welcome all of you, um, whether you are watching on um, our live stream on YouTube um, or listening um, in the parking lot on the radio or, of course, in the here in person. We are delighted that you could join us to worship today. Um, <clears throat> in the um, pews in front of you, um, you will find a couple of cards. This one is, um, the blue one is for prayer requests. We have some extraordinary prayer warriors um, here and they meet every Monday and they pray every day. They lift up by name, um, all of the people who have submitted prayer requests. If you're watching online, you can uh, send um, an email or put something in the comments and uh, that will get to the proper people also. Um, you can drop this in the um, um, offering plate uh, when it comes around. There's also a yellow card uh, we would be grateful if you are a visitor with us today that you would fill this out and put it in the offering plate and um, then we will have a way of keeping in touch with you um, throughout the rest of the year. <clears throat> there are lots of things happening in uh, the life of Grace right now and uh, coming up. On the, this Wednesday, the 10th, United Women in Faith will be meeting at one o'clock at Sonia Zinni's home. Next Sunday, the 14th, will be a, a congregational meeting. I invite you all to plan to stay um, for that. And um, then the following week, Wednesday, the 17th, will be the men's breakfast, and Thursday, the 18th, will be the women's breakfast. And um, don't forget the blood drive on the 31st. I believe that the um, campaign that they're having is uh, in, su in support of fighting children ca children's cancer and uh, they're giving away socks. So um, you can register. There's information in the bulletin on, on most of those things. Um, and so now, um, if you would please use this time of the prelude to prepare your hearts and minds for uh, worship. Thank you.
before we enter into the offering, um, I would like to welcome our guest preacher, the Reverend Dr. Jim Wilson II. He is our new district superintendent of the Miami Valley District, and we are just thrilled that, that he was able to clear his calendar and come here um, to share the word with us this morning. His wife, Nancy. Oh, yes. His wife, Nancy, is, is with us as well, sitting next to Roberta over there. Um, <clears throat> Reverend Wilson said that in his entire professional life, he's never gone more than four weeks without preaching. So <laughs> we saved him from that. <laughs> and, and that's a, a blessing for us, I'm sure. Um, I also want to welcome Leah Estes at the Harp, who provides such a beautiful um, accompaniment to our worship. As you know, we um, honor a tradition of uh, coming to worship and bearing offerings. Um, and so we will do that now. If you will join me, please, in the offertory prayer. God of light and love and peace, we praise your name for leading us in paths of righteousness that we may come into your presence forgiven and free. We give you thanks for guiding us to this place where we may rest beside the still waters of your grace, where we are filled with the good gifts of your goodness and mercy. We worship you with all that we are, and we bless your name for all that we will be as we continue on our journey, a journey that leads us to your kingdom, where we will dwell with you forever. We offer you these gifts that you might bless them and send them out into the valley of the shadow of death and everywhere in need of your light. Amen.
Will you stand please for the doxology and then remain standing for the call to worship. When the world is dark and full of hate and fear, when we cannot see God, we will turn on the light. When we cannot find our way back to love and peace, we will turn on the light. When our vision dims due to the darkness within, we will turn on the light. Christ opens our eyes with the gift of sight. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. Come and worship the one who brings sight to the blind. Hallelujah. Praise God, the light of the world. Kids, come sit on the steps. Today's prophet is named Isaiah. This story is found in the Old Testament book of the Bible named after him. Isaiah speaks, speaks to these thoughts of faith or religion connected only to what we do and say on Sundays. He agrees that worshiping God is a great thing, but God is very much interested in what someone does with the rest of the week as well. Attending worship every week is important to God, but there is so much more. We're going to play a game, thumbs up, thumbs down. The congregation can help us play as well. Thumbs up if you agree or yes. Thumbs down if you disagree or no. You guys ready? Okay. Suppose that all week, bless you, you treated someone unfairly. But when you sing loudly in church on Sunday, how do you think God feels about your behavior? You think God feels good about your behavior? Thumbs up. Thumbs down if you don't think God feels good about your behavior. All right. Next one. Suppose that you have not offered to help someone in need or who is poor, but you include that person in your Sunday church prayer. How do you think God feels about that behavior? Thumbs up, you think he is pleased, or thumbs down? Oh, I see a lot of don't knows. <laughs> okay. Next one. Suppose you wanted to win a game or, or sporting event so much that you may even cheat to do so. 
but then say amen in agreement during the Sunday sermon when the pastor speaks about truth, fairness, or justice. Do you think God will be pleased with you because you attended worship regularly? Thumbs up or thumbs down? All right. If we don't show our faith in God all during the week by the way we treat others, attending worship and offering prayers won't mean anything to God. Faith should mean more to us than Sundays. Faith is a Monday through Sunday, 24-7, important to God, and it should be important for us as well. What is this? A phone? Do you guys know how many times a person looks at their phone a day? How many times do you guys look at your phones or, or tablets a day? <laughs> so there was some research done that a person looks at their phone or devices 96 times a day. Uh, you look at it about every 10 minutes. People seem to use their smartphones for everything from phone calls to getting directions to a location they are wanting to find or using the internet. They are always using their phones for something every day of the week. This is a great reminder that God wants us to use our faith Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So as a reminder, when you look at your device, think about God and what he wants you to do in that moment. What we can learn from Isaiah is that God wants us to show others love and Christ-like behavior every day of the week. Let us pray. God of communication, teach us how to do what is right. Let us live our faith, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week. Let us show you and others our faith all week, including Sundays. Amen. Amen. You guys can go downstairs. Thank you. The Old Testament telling this morning is from 1 Samuel, and it's about a pivotal time in the history of Israel. And the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you be in grief about Saul? I have rejected him as king of Israel. Take your horn and fill it with oil and set out, for I am sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem, and I will provide a new king for Israel from among his sons. 
And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer and say that you are coming to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse and his sons, and I will tell you what to do, and I will show you which one to anoint. So Samuel sent, set out for Bethlehem and came there, and the elders of the city came to him trembling, saying, Do, do you come peaceably? And Samuel said, peaceably, I have come to make an offering, a sacrifice to the Lord. So sanctify yourselves and come with me. And Samuel also sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Now when they got there, Samuel looked at Eliab and said to himself, surely, this is the anointed one of the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not see as mortals see, looking at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So Jesse brought Abinadab to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said, neither does the Lord choose this one. And then he brought Shammah to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said, neither does the Lord choose this one. Jesse brought seven of his sons to pass before Samuel and Samuel said, the Lord has chosen none of these. Have you any other sons? And Jesse said, well, there's that young one out watching the sheep. And Samuel said, send for him, bring him in. For we will not sit at the table until he comes. So they sent for him and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and a handsome face. And the Lord said to Samuel, rise up, anoint him, for this is the one. And he took the horn of oil and he anointed him in the presence of all of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David for the rest of his life. And then Samuel set out for Ramah. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, today's story from the book of Luke has Jesus talking to his disciples. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make for yourselves purses that do not wear out, an everlasting treasure where thieves do not come near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to come back from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants who are alert when the master comes. Truly, I tell you, he will put on his belt 
and ask them to sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the middle of the night or near dawn, and they are ready, blessed are those servants. But now know that if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for all people.
Let us pray. Gracious God, who created us in God's own image, we are grateful for all that you have done for us, for all that you are doing in us, and for all that you will do through us. Open our eyes to see your presence among us moving in powerful ways at all times and in all places. Open our ears to hear familiar words in new ways, ways that will change us and challenge us to become the people you created us to be. Grant us the power and the courage to come out of the darkness and into the light of Jesus Christ, that we may serve you by serving others. We love you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I ask you, our God, that you would bless the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts. Let them be holy and acceptable to your sight, for you are our strength and blessed Redeemer. Amen. Harpus is a real deal, isn't she? Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. I didn't expect to cry when I came here this morning. <laughs> but I'm just sitting here thinking I am so far away from where I have been my whole ministry. Gosh, it feels good to be here this morning. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, your pastor, Pastor Don and I are, are brothers, same last name, just different mothers, you know. So uh, we, we've been friends for, for many years, and he's a good guy, and I hope he is enjoying his vacation. Um, thank you for inviting me. I, I'm brand new to the superintendency, so uh, I'm, I'm learning uh, as I go. My wife and I uh, just moved into our home in Centerville uh, oh, 10 days ago, so we're still unpacking boxes. Uh, for 35 years, I pastored churches throughout the West Ohio Annual Conference, including here in, the, in what used to be the Dayton South District. I went to United Seminary, and the first year I was at seminary, I lived in Fout Hall. I drove by that this morning. Phew, mercy. But I understand, I understand, but wow, you know, a lot has changed. That first year at seminary, I worshiped here at, at Grace, and I usually sat right over there, and I always saw Bob Woods was a pastor then, you know, and he, I, the pulpit, I've, I've told this story for years, I said, it's like a, back then, it looked like it was huge, it's like a bird cage perched out over, and, and Bob would always start his sermon with a little, with a little story, or a joke, or some, something that just kind of made you happy, and then he'd go like this, you know, he, he'd just tip his head and point his finger like that, he impacted my preaching more than uh, anybody else. He and uh, Bishop Kolal had him for, for preaching. So uh, Dayton Grace, so to speak, has played a big role in my ministry, and uh, it feels good to be back. Last time I was in the sanctuary was graduation Sunday. That would have been in uh, 1990, so it's been, what, 32 years. So on, on behalf of uh, Bishop and Mrs. Palmer, I, I bring you their greetings. They too are on vacation this week, and uh, I know they, they think fondly of, of grace. They appreciate all that this church is doing, and likewise me. I'm here to, to preach. Like I said, I haven't preached for four weeks, so don't get nervous. <laughs> it's like, this is so different. I mean, when I was at church in Messiah in Westerville, I was preaching three, five times a weekend once on Saturday and four times on Sunday. And uh, I'm t that's not for the weak hearted. And now I've been in the Holy Land for two weeks and, uh, and then Lake Junaluska. Last week I was up at Aldersgate and it's like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'll get right to it. You know, I don't have to spend any time this morning explaining to everybody that it is a different day. All you have to do is uh, look around, watch TV, talk to your friends and just everything's turned upside down. COVID has ripped apart, not just some churches, but all churches. The church I used to pastor, every church I visited so far, you can definitely see and feel the impacts of COVID. And then the world and all of its challenges and politics and division and so forth, it's just a hot mess. It's a hot mess. And we as a church, if we think we can still just, we're gonna run the same game plan and it's all going to be better. You, we know that's not true. And I, I don't, I'm not bringing the magic solution here this morning. I know it's difficult, but I still believe that the church has, has the roadmap for the new day. Because you read the Bible from, from front to back, there, there's just stories of leadership that changed 
day after day after day. Remember back in the Old Testament, God looked down, once again, the world was a hot mess. It, it, was, it was terrible. And he saw one guy getting it right. And that guy, his name was Abram. He went, went on to be Abraham, but whatever. I'll call him Abraham, it's just easier to say. Abraham, you're getting it right. I'm gonna use you as a leader, and I'm gonna bless you to be a blessing. That's a, that's a whole nother sermon too. I'll come back and preach that another day. I'm gonna bless you to be a blessing. And Abraham, Abraham led the people, and then he passed the baton to, to Isaac, his son. And Isaac led, led the people, and he passed the baton off to Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, and make a long story short, everybody ends up as slaves in Egypt. Starting to sound familiar? Things were a mess then. God rose up a leader. They're a burning bush. A couple weeks ago, my wife and I got to visit. What they, what they believe is still that burning bush. That was, that was cool. Anyway, from that burning bush, Moses, I need you to lead the people. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Go to Pharaoh and let, tell him, let the people go. Moses did. So Moses was, a new, Moses was a different leader than Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Moses was his own person. But he didn't get him all the way to the finish line, did he, to the promised land. He dies. He passes the baton on to Joshua. And Joshua was a, a different type of leader. Joshua got them to the promised land, but he doesn't live forever. And times continue to change. And now all of a sudden, leadership is done by judges. What book in the Bible do you read to learn about the judges? Judges, there you go. All right, I know. We're, we're in good shape this morning. Good shape. And I would have been disappointed if you, if you didn't memorize the scripture with the scripture tellers. You guys have changed so many churches across this annual conference. Uh, we have the sacred scripture tellers that uh, we, I used to have a, a church, they're, they're still there, Church of Messiah. And everybody looks to date and grace about the scripture tellers and boomer shines and the whole shebang. So um, you guys did a wonderful job. So, oh, anyway, judges, men judges, women judges, all types of judges, good judges, not so good judges. I find it fascinating in the superintendency. I, I come across churches, send us anybody but a woman. Yeah, be careful, be careful, be careful. We have one church that said that we don't want a woman. This morning, they don't have a pastor. You know, you realize that we have more churches than pastors now? Talk about a mess, you know. There are plenty of biblical examples of women in leadership including judges, some good judges. But you know what? They were looking around and thought, all these other countries, their leadership, they have kings. We want a king. No, you don't want a king. We want a king, we want a king, we want a king. Kind of like that one scene in Lion King, you know? Okay. So God gave him a king, Saul. How'd that turn out? Not good. It's like God could have said, told you so. But you wanted a king, I bless you with the king. And Saul just kind of went south. So God needed to have another leader. And he tells Samuel, Samuel, go to Bethlehem. I'm gonna raise up a, a new leader for a new day. Paraphrasing the good Lord, forgive me. You know, go to Bethlehem. So Samuel, this great big fancy prophet, he's marching over to Bethlehem. And all these Bethlehem people, they're thinking, uh-oh, somebody in town messed up. Somebody did something because he's not coming here just to say, oh, how's everything in Bethlehem today? So they're getting all nervous, and they said, relax. It's all right. Everybody in Bethlehem, I'm bringing you good news. We're going to raise up a leader here in Bethlehem today. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Now, I want you, same with the prophets, I want you to go out and find Jesse. So they go find Jesse. Jesse's probably thinking, uh-oh, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I don't know what's been done, but I didn't do it. Jesse, one of your sons is going to be the new leader for a new day, the new king. So Jesse does what most people think he would do. He, he brought forth his oldest son. Because surely maturity comes with age. Not true. Tall, handsome. Surely leadership has to do with how you look. Not true. Samuel says, Jesse, he's not the one. So Jesse brings the second son. He's not the one. Brings the third son. He's not the one. 
four, five, six, seven. No. See, Samuel had this great big horn filled with oil, and whoever the, the, the new leader is going to be is going to pour the oil on the new person, kind of anoint, anoint the new king. So he's, he's sitting there holding the, holding the horn. Now, I, I don't want to put words in Samuel's mouth, but maybe he's thinking, you know, am I really in Bethlehem? You know, did, did, did I hear right? A new leader, a new king from Bethlehem. I didn't know what good could come from Bethlehem. Now, we've gone through seven sons. Maybe he's getting a little frustrated. He says, Jesse, do you have any more sons? Jesse, do you have anybody else? Well, I got the Hakaton, the youngest. He out there in the field watching the sheep. Probably where he'll cause the least amount of damage. The Hebrew word hakaton implies insignificance. Doesn't amount much. Jesse, do you got any more sons? Well, I got the hakaton. He out there. He's out there. Bring him here. So they went out and got the boy. Not the oldest. Not the real slick one. The boy out here watching the sheep. And they brought him. And Samuel said, this is the one. And he took the horn and he started to pour the oil all over little boy David who played the harp. <laughs> Just saying. How many people that day thought, you know what, I don't know what's going on here, but this is the king? The shepherd boy? Get out of here. There ain't no way. But God raised David up. And we know how this story ends. Many, 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 many years later, the angel said to shepherds in a field, Behold, I bring you good news. For to you was born a Savior this day, whose name is Jesus Christ. He comes from the house of David from the Hakatan comes our Savior Jesus Christ and my message to you this morning is short and sweet two things corporately as a church if we're not careful we're, we can think oh we're just the Hakatan you know what, what can God do with us our days are, are long past we don't have the mojo anymore. We don't have, we don't have the momentum. We, we don't have the people. We, we, on and on and on. And God probably just says, you know, please just get it out of your system. I'm thinking God looks down and says, how many times do I have to show the world I'm going to take the least, the last, the lost, the unexpected, the hakaton, and I'm going to make something great from that. You've got to ask yourselves as a congregation this morning, are we going to sit here and just watch it go to the end? Or do we say, you know what? It's a new day. It's a different day. And we're not going to sit here and grieve the past. But we're going to get excited about the future. That's, that's a big discussion for this church and every I'm not picking on you guys this morning. It's the same in every church I've been to so far and for everyone I've heard about. You don't want, you want to know about what some of the churches are going. Count yourself blessed this morning. Count yourself blessed. But let's also look individually. In, in our individual lives, I, I don't know what your individual story is. You think you know some of mine, but let me tell you, <laughs> I too felt like the Hakatan. You, you, you want me? Because sometimes we think, oh man, if, if everybody just knew all the mistakes we've made. If, if everybody, I'm, I'm just glad everybody doesn't know my journey. Because I'm too broken, too scarred, too messed up, too used, to uh, whatever, 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 on and on and on. I, I'm, I'm better off just to be out back here. I'll just watch the sheep. 
And from those times, oh, you guys, this, God pulls us out of shepherding animals and says, I'm looking. I'm looking for men and women today of every age. Oh, I'm too old. No, you're never too old. Of people willing to say, okay, bless me to be a blessing like Abraham. I'll do it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll do it, God, like Moses said. David, who was drug out of the shepherd's field. Okay, I'm a little boy. I, I'll be the king. And none of those people in the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament were any good as, as a leader except submitting themselves to the power of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. So ask yourself this morning, what is it? What is it that, that you can lead in such a day? It's not yesterday, and only God knows what the future holds. But today, I'm convinced, I'm stupid enough to believe this, but I do believe it with my whole heart, each and every one of us can lead something for the kingdom. Maybe it's right here at Grace, Maybe it's in the workplace. Maybe it's around your kitchen table. God needs you. God needs us all. And I believe that we were brought to this time for such a time as this to be bearers of the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Holy and gracious God, we just pray that you would awaken something within each and every one of us. Use the, the richness of the past to excite us and motivate us and to the mystery and the unknown of the future. But the present, O oh God, help us surrender fully, fully. Let us fill the oil that you pour upon us this day to be leaders for such a day. In Christ's name. I invite you to join me as we share together our, our prayer or confession as we approach the table this morning. Let us pray together. Forgiving God, in a world filled with so much pain, we would rather shut our eyes and be blind than see things as they really are. Grant us courage to face the reality of the world and give us the strength to bring your light to those who walk in darkness. Help us see others as you see them, and forgive us when we do not trust you enough to open our eyes to the possibilities before us. Heal our self-inflicted blindness, O oh God, and lead us in the footsteps of the light of the world, who reveals your glory in his life, his teachings, and his love. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Christ came to lead us in paths of righteousness and to guide us through our lives. Christ is with us in times of danger and times of peace. The goodness and mercy of God are given to us each and every day of our lives. God forgives us for our failings, upholds us in love, and leads us to the place that Christ has prepared for us. Believe in your heart that God loves you and that God forgives you. We believe. God, help our unbelief. ready for the great Thanksgiving? Yeah. We remind ourselves that the table in the United Methodist Church is open to everybody. It's open. It's a great gift that we offer. So as we come together, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is right and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, deliver us to slavery, to sin, and death, and made with us a covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples. And as he poured it out, he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with the church which Christ has offered to all people and together as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Allow them to be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty Father now and forever. the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and all shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoed through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by created beings. Your common wealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we observe from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, 
strengthen us. From trial too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For your reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward as we receive the elements this morning. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And likewise, the blood of Christ shed for you. We thank you, O oh God, for inviting us to this table. And we thank you for meeting us at it. And we ask you, O oh God, that you would send us forth from it. Not for our sake, but for the sake of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Amen.
before I share the benediction, I just got to say this. There's something happening here. All right? Amen. I don't know what it is. I'm just a new person. You know, I got 132 churches. But I, what I've seen so far, there's something happening at Greece. Amen. You know, you got this type of facility, and you got this guy over here on the organ, Amen. and you got this lady singing. I'm just telling you, where I've been at so far, they ain't got that. It just doesn't happen. So you got something here. And the question is, what are you going to do with it? Pastor Don, surround him, love him, support him. You guys got it. Amen. And your, your best days, I believe, are the days ahead. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, see, I'm going to say, told you so, told you so. You know, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I know it's a, it's a tough day. I just want to tell you, it's tough everywhere. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And we got the good Lord on our side. So go into the world, carrying the light of Christ into the darkness. We go with hearts full and eyes open. Receive God's love and care and share that love and care with others. We go with eyes reflecting God's light and hands open to share it. May you walk in the light of Christ all the days of your life. We will follow Christ forever.